Hello there, I'm Caroline. Do you remember this line? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Remember what it is from? I'll give you a moment to check your notes. That's right. It's the beginning of the Declaration of Independence. And these words imply that you have rights and list a few of them. All men means everyone, though, right? So what about the fact that slavery was still a major part of society when the Declaration was written? Today, at the end of the lesson, you will be able to explain the way in which the 13th and 14th Amendments define civil rights in America. And today's essential question is this. Why are civil rights dependent upon the collective recognition of all Americans as citizens? A right is something endowed by birth. As we said in the last lesson, rights are the capacity to engage in democratic practices, to enjoy personal privacy, to have access to justice, and to be treated publicly with dignity and respect. Constitutional rights protect against government discrimination. Civil rights protect against government as well as private discrimination that prevents equal social, economic, and political opportunity. With those rights come responsibilities. Responsibilities are the norms and behaviors that individuals must engage in to secure the public good. To understand and ensure civil rights, the individual must understand that exercising and maintaining civil rights is a collective responsibility. It is up to each one of us to work together in order to protect them from abuse. As we all know, one of these abused groups in American history were African Americans, and especially when they were held as slaves. The tension caused by slavery in the land of the free boiled over into the Civil War. During the war, enslaved people left the plantations of the South and marched towards a more hopeful future. At first, these human beings were considered contraband, but as more and more found their ways to northern encampments, the North was forced into action. The Emancipation Proclamation recognized what enslaved people already knew and would be forced into the view of the rest of the country, and that is that truly all men are created equal and endowed by their creator with unalienable rights. A government cannot take something away from people it never gave to begin with. However, only together can people realize the words of the Declaration of Independence. Enslaved people had to act together to force northern officials to see what was already apparent, that they were always free. Their actions define civil rights as a condition of birth in America. The conclusion of the Civil War cemented the actions of enslaved people, the recognition of northern officials, and the decades of abolitionist agitation into the fabric of American culture. The 13th Amendment made the institution of slavery unconstitutional. The 13th Amendment says, Neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted, shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. It's crucial to remember that the Constitution is the highest law in the land. It is a social contract that makes our rights clear, and it requires that all people be responsible to one another as fellow citizens. The 13th Amendment resolved, in part, the obvious contradiction in American society. But it is the 14th Amendment that creates birthright citizenship and grants it constitutional and civil rights. It's time to show what you know! Please grab out a pen and notebook. During the Civil War, what did enslaved persons do to frame civil rights as a condition of birth in America? How did the 13th Amendment partially resolve a major contradiction in American society? Remember from Unit 3 that America is the land of many governments? Federalism creates a tension between state and federal government over the role each plays in American life. States have reserved rights while the federal government has expressed powers. 
At times, they overlap, and these are called concurrent powers. This means there are certain areas that the federal government lacks clear jurisdiction. Areas such as education, voting, and marriage are typically void of or difficult for federal involvement. The Fourteenth Amendment has five sections. For our lesson, we're mostly concerned with the first two sections. The Fourteenth Amendment was designed to ensure states did not violate the civil rights of any American. The first section has four important clauses that are taken from these lines. All persons born or naturalized in the United States and subject to the jurisdiction thereof are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. First, it declares that all people born or naturalized fall within the jurisdiction of the U.S. This creates birthright citizenship. This reinforces that, as American citizens, first, our collective responsibility is to see each other as one rather than a collection of individual state citizens. It also means that the U.S. Constitution represents all Americans, despite any individual's social identity or state of residence. Then you have the privilege and immunities clause. Americans are given certain privileges; these are given by the government. Next, you have due process. Civil rights are protected by the process of law; they are not given, but are protected. Finally, you have the equal protection clause. This process is guaranteed to all people born or naturalized in America. The Fourteenth Amendment goes on to state that a person can become naturalized into the American concept of citizenship, like a rebirth of sorts. It prevents states from denying to us our civil rights based on some other condition, and the Fourteenth Amendment defines civil rights as a condition of being born or naturalized in America. This transfers citizenship and protection of civil rights from state governments to the federal government. But this wasn't the end of it. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 applied the Fourteenth Amendment to non-state actors. This came to encompass private businesses. Civil rights further framed rights and their preservation as a collective responsibility, one that all people must recognize and respect in order for it to become a reality. Section two put an end to the Three Fifths Compromise. If you remember from Unit Two, the Three Fifths Compromise counted enslaved persons as three fifths of a person. Section two makes all people whole people in regard to representation and taxation. It's that time again. Time to show what you know. Grab a pen and notebook and let's get started. What is the Fourteenth Amendment? What was it designed to do? What are the important sections of the Fourteenth Amendment? How does it redefine citizenship? How does this redefinition further define civil rights? Let's see if you can answer the essential question of the lesson. Ask your parents to use their answer guide to check your response. Why are civil rights dependent upon the collective recognition of all Americans as citizens? Today we learned that to define civil rights, we must recognize all people as American citizens. We also learned that the Thirteenth Amendment ended the institution of slavery, which was a key step in defining civil rights as a condition of birth in America. We learned that the Fourteenth Amendment transferred the concept of citizenship and the protection of civil rights to the federal government. And finally, we learned that the Civil Rights Act of 1964 applied the Fourteenth Amendment to private businesses and individuals. That's it for us today. In the next lesson, we will investigate the expansion of voting rights in America. Until then, have a wonderful day, and remember to vote, debate, and participate.、Hey.